how are you feeling coming off coming off the injury and playing such a heavy load like right off the bat? How, how's your body holding up to the the demands of, of playing high level minutes uh, at a rate you haven't had to do before at this level? Um, my body's holding up pretty well. You know, I'm you know taking care of it every day, getting the necessary treatment I need to be able to go out there and produce for the team. So um, you know, it was a bit of a change. I had to get adjusted to you know the first two couple games, but you know, I think my body's you know I'm adjusted now and ready to go. What was it like the first time you heard the PA announcer call out Eugene Brown the third as a starter? What, what was that moment like? Uh, I mean, it was a pretty big moment. Um, you know, it was on a away game, so I didn't get ready to, you know, right. fulfill it and embrace it, you know, fully. But, you know, it was still something about, you know, some joy. You know, I just tried to stay locked in and, you know, stay in the moment. Was it any different hearing it at home for the first time? Yeah, it was, you know, with the crowd and everything, you know, the, you know, elongated, you know, Eugene. Like, yeah, just all the extra stuff, the ad libs, it just, it made it more more special. How uh, validating for you is it to be, you know, a regular starter for this team now? And is, is that a clear sign that maybe you've been looking for that, you know, your hard work is paying off and you're you are taking the strides that you uh, wanted to? Um, I don't know if it's a clear sign. You know, it's not really about, you know, starting. It's about, you know, who's finishing, how you're playing, all that stuff. So, I mean, um, of course, I love starting, you know, being able to help my team off the get go. Um, but I feel like it's, it's definitely um, a validation of just the hard work that I've been putting in and just, you know, staying the course, um, trusting the coaches, the team, the, the, the process, basically. And what about your performance the other night? Obviously, 10, uh, 10 big points for the Buckeyes. I mean, how uh, you know, comfortable did you feel out there? And, and can you, uh, you know, take that and, and go to the next level now here in the, the next few games? Uh, I'm starting to feel a bit more trusted just by you know, everyone, um, coaches, players, you know, fans. So um, I, think it's, I think it's giving me a little bit of confidence. Um, so you know, just going out there and just playing my game, being myself, um, it's allowed me to help the team. How have you seen yourself grow? over the course of the past two years? Is, is there one area of your game that stands out the most? Um, I would definitely say, you know, just probably my offensive game. Because, um, you know, last year was a lot of, you know, spot up stuff, um, wasn't really doing much. But now I feel like, you know, I'm able to do a couple more things with the ball in my hands, um, you know, see stuff going on. And of course, my defense, that's always getting better, you know, locking into the details and stuff like that. That's one of the things that your coach has said in the past he wants to see you grow in is your offensive approach. I mean, how is he, how is the coaching staff, how has your teammates kind of challenged you in being kind of, you know, that increased offensive guy, not only, you know, showcasing your defensive versatility, but kind of being out there as like a guy that can be counted on offensively? Um, kind of just the, the trust and, you know, the stuff they put in me, telling me to just be aggressive, you know, stay aggressive. They don't care if I'm missing shots. Um, Stuff like that. If I'm taking good shots, the shots that you know are within the plays and the system, then you know everybody's down for it. So it's just giving me confidence. What do you think you did to get into the starting five? What I mean specifically, was there anything you were told, or you know, is there anything you felt like you were making progress in to to become a starter? Um, not necessarily. I know Coach told me you know he wanted me to become a more efficient shooter um, to get more playing time, and then of course my defense and everything. So I think. Um, me not playing at that Rutgers game, or you know, they had a lot of like-sized guys for me. Um, I was going to play that game, but you know, of course, I didn't with the injury. So I think that Michigan game that was a chance for me to go out there and you know use my versatility on the defensive end. I think that's why I got the starting role. And coming from high school, I, mean, I assume you were one of the bigger guys just in general. How how much did last year help kind of just transition? I know you probably didn't play as much as you wanted to and have the role, but just having that year to kind of play, but not necessarily be. A, major factor, did that help you adjust to college game and kind of figuring out where exactly you fit within the, the scheme of things here? Uh, yeah, I think it did. You know, just talking to the leaders that we had last year, um, CJ, of course, EJ, um, you know, all those guys just, just getting a secondary view and their viewpoint of, you know, how the things are going, season, stuff like that. It was able to just, you know, allow me to get ready for this year. Do you feel the game's still slowing down for you? I know that you're not really a new guy anymore at all, but, but you're Minutes are increasing with each game. Do you, do you feel it's still slowing down, or do you think you're completely up to speed? Do you think? No, I think it's definitely still slowing down. Um, just for the adjustment with all the minutes, you know, getting out there and you know being more aggressive. Of course, it's going to take a little bit just for the game to fully slow down, but it's definitely been improved. You're a pretty versatile guy defensively. Uh, you give this team a lot, but uh, Jamari kind of sets the tone for what you guys do out on the perimeter on the defensive end. Uh, He's a really experienced guy. What have you learned from him this year, and and what can you take away from from his game that might help you become even more versatile and even better on deep on the defensive end? I've learned a lot from him actually. So you know, um, when we're covering ball screens, you know, I've asked him a couple of questions about how you do this, how you do that. 
um, rotational stuff, just all the you know ins and outs that he probably knows just from being a defensive player for you know five years or whatever. Um, I kind of just you know pick his brain about stuff like that to make my game better. Uh, when we've talked with uh, Chris Holman just these last couple weeks, he's mentioned that this stretch run is going to be really a big test for your team and whatnot. Starting with Illinois on Thursday, um, with the way you guys played them last year in the Big Ten tournament, how big is this stretch run in your opinion? Just the way uh, your team's going to approach going into March. Um, I feel like this game, um, basically starting with the Illinois game, is, is a big one because um, you know we beat them last year at their place. They beat us here at our place, and then you know the overtime and Big Ten tournament. So I think it's um, the competition is still going to be there. Um, it's going to be a real competitive game. You know, of course, Kofi's is a, I mean, he's a beast. So I mean, we got players they got to worry about too. So it's going to be a great game, and I'm just excited to get this stretch on the way. How uh, how do you and the rest of your teammates plan to approach playing a guy like Kofi and you know, Trent Frazier, uh, Curbelo, and whatnot uh, going into Illinois on Thursday? Um, I mean, it's just going to be game plan. You know, we always game plan for every team we play. So I think game plan is just a little bit of, you know, fight and heart um, will get us to that game. Gee, what was that, that block like that you had against Indiana where you had the guy kind of on the breakaway and you shot it down pretty quickly? What's, what's a moment like that like and how do you feel that uh, spark a team a little bit? Um, that's something I used to be known for in high school, actually, was, you know, going and blocking shots like that. So it just felt good to, you know, kind of, you know, relive that and bring that side back out. So, I mean, um, blocks like that always give your team a great boost of energy, especially off of a turnover that it happened on. So, I mean, it was just great. And you mentioned the, the Rutgers game. And I, I was, after that game, I was thinking about how I think if you play that game, you guys probably win. It seemed like your length and athleticism probably would have given you an, another, another, um, ability against Rutgers. I don't know. What was it like for you watching that game and knowing that that seemed to be a game that was kind of tailor-made for your skills and you, you couldn't play? Uh, I mean, it was, it was tough, of course. Um, you know, I talked to Coach about it before the game, but, um, you know, it was nothing we could do about it. I needed to sit out just to, you know, um, be where I'm at right now to be healthy. So it was just a decision we had to make. Was defensive versatility in that part of your game, was that, also, was that something that you kind of, you know, uh, that always a part of it, like back in high school, back when you started playing, was that something you always kind of latched on to as kind of your thing, or, or when did that kind of come about for you? Uh, I kind of just took pride in it, basically. Um, in the region I was in, it was a lot of, you know, top-ranked guys, a lot of guys like that, so I just loved to, you know, compete and guard them and go against them, you know, on a weekly basis, so I guess the just defensive thing kind of just picked up off of that. And you, and you mentioned the game kind of still slowing down for you. When you started getting those starters minutes and hearing your name called and things like that, did it did you feel like you were ready for it? Like, was it something that you were like, oh, no, I may not, you know, yeah. Is, is it something that you kind of had to still get used to, or was it something you felt like you were ready for to get those amount of minutes and to hear your name called in that starting lineup? Um, yeah, I felt like I was ready. I mean, um, like they asked about my, you know, body adjusting. I feel like that was the only thing that probably wasn't ready coming off of the, you know, the break that I was on. But, you know, mentally, um, emotionally, I was ready. I was, you know, I felt like I could deserve those minutes and, you know, be effective. Excited to see uh, Bruce Thornton sign with Ohio State. Yeah, I am. It's my you, guy. How, how well do you guys know each other? Uh, pretty well. Um, you know, he's came on a visit a couple times. You know, um, I know him before that just from being in the Georgia area, Milton, and all that stuff. So I'm excited for Bruce to get up here. And because you were talking about your shot blocking, who's better at blocking shots, you or EJ? I'll probably give it to EJ. You know, he's he's more in that, you know, predicament or situation a lot more to me. So he does a great job blocking shots. Um, he had, what, like four or five against Iowa. So, I mean, it's something he does with his athleticism and everything. So I'll probably give it to EJ. Hey, Thank you.
All right, guys. Uh, obviously, quick turnaround here with um, the good, really good team in uh, in Illinois. So, uh, got uh, got a quick turnaround against a, a talented and tough and tough-minded group. It's well coached and uh, be uh, um, obviously playing playing there uh, with fans for for the first time in in a few years. So, um, only playing them once this year after. Obviously, playing in the Big Ten championship game and a couple times last year. So, um, quick turnaround. And uh, as far as the health of our guys, you know, we've got some guys that, um, you know, have felt a little bit under the weather the last couple of days. But uh, uh, all in all, no, no uh, significant change to our our injury report as of now. So we all know what Kofi can do, and we know what his numbers tell you uh, he's historically not put up those kinds of numbers against you and I know he's a different he's bigger and everything this year but w what do you think you've done well on him in, in the past that's enabled you to sort of keep him in check uh you know he's he's obviously um he's a tremendous player and he's a tremendous finisher around the basket and two-point finisher and um, rim runner all those things he creates so much help uh, situations um you know I I, I think uh, we've we've probably done a good job with some of our positioning against him. You're trying to keep a body on him as much as possible, but you know, all in all, Adam, he's he's a guy that you're not going to expect to, you know, kind of. Um, he's he's going to get he's going to get some of his, and you're trying as much as possible just to make him work. Obviously, they're not apples to apples, but coming off the physical challenge that Illinois, or that uh, excuse me, Indiana presented. Does that does that help at all in preparation for this? Like going into that game, and some you mentioned like angles and things with EJ on yeah. Trace. It may, it, it may. Um, I think uh, the reality is is, is uh, both games were very physical. Iowa might have been our most physical game of the year. So I think you know you're playing really physical opponents. Uh, that certainly prepares you uh, well for another really physical opponent. Um, and while Iowa's physicality was a little bit different, they, they, it was still a very, very physical game across the board. And then the bigs with Indiana, um, I think that was a physical game as well. Coach, I know you said uh, just now, of course, but on the radio specifically, you said something about um, one very important guy for you guys was, was dealing with, this, with an illness. Are you able to say who that, who that was the other night? Yeah, no, I'd rather just keep that between us. But um, he did a great job battling through it. And, um, and I didn't really hit him until – you know, until kind of right before tip, honestly. And then um, he told me about it in the midst of the game. So um, hopefully he'll continue to get his, his energy back where it needs to. A lot of people will look at this game and think that it's, you know, a, a tremendous challenge. How much do you try to look at it as an opportunity more than a challenge? Yeah, I think both, really. You know, both. Obviously, we're only playing them once. It's unique where, you know, You'd love to be able to have a league where you can't, but you'd love to be able to have a league where you can play everybody twice. You know, I, I, I'm just I'm a fan of of those kind of situations. Um, with a league this big, you can't do it, and I understand why you can't do it. But I, I'd love to be able to to do traditional home and homes. But having said that, we've got uh, uh, them obviously once uh, on the road, as well as a couple other teams uh, on the road once. So. I think all in all, um, you look at it as both. Certainly a, a great challenge and, and a great opportunity. When you look at the way that this league is starting to shake out, I know I asked you a couple weeks ago and you said you didn't want to talk about it yet, but that's something that starts to crop up around this time with four or five games left. Um, this is a huge opportunity for your team to, to stay right up there near the top. How important is it in that aspect? And, and do you start to touch on that maybe a little bit now that you're into this stretch? You know, I think our focus is still on um, really the day-to-day -day stuff of, of improving our uh, – on those things we have to improve on. You know, i just big believer that the results will take care of themselves if we're focusing on the right stuff. So, at the end of the day, uh, there's not a lot of those conversations, not like we're hanging up, you know, league standings and, and uh, our, our guys are aware of them and throughout the year we've made them aware of them. But um, uh, the reality is, is you're just trying to focus on 
kind of the important things that you think really matter with your team right now, kind of the nuts and bolts, and the rest of that stuff hopefully will take care of itself. There's still a lot of games to be played from a lot of teams still in our league. Gene was talking today about how his defensive versatility is kind of the product of kind of where he learned the game of basketball, who he was playing against. Is that something that you saw from the get-go when you were recruiting him? And, and kind of what was your first impression of Gene there? Yeah, just that long, versatile uh, ability to guard a couple different positions. He's really um, gotten stronger since he's been here. But uh, we just liked his size and versatility. He got injured in high school uh, pretty significantly. Uh, and I think that, that affected him some. Uh, that and his shooting were things that we kind of liked. His dad did a great job coaching him. Um, uh, and um, we, 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 love, we, we love his family. You know, we just felt like he's, he comes from just a tremendous group of people. And that always is, a, is really exciting for us in recruiting guys. And you've talked in the past about how you've challenged him in his offensive game. And I'm curious, it, was the Indiana game kind of a sign of progress? Was that kind of you know, exciting for you that he's kind of starting yeah. to show that a little bit? Anytime you see that with guys, you know. I think he struggled, you know, he struggled in the Iowa game, but I thought he, you know, he played, played within himself and was aggressive, took the opportunities that were there, was ready on the catch. Um, yeah, I really liked, uh, liked what we saw from him. Staying with Gene. Um, he was asked if he felt like he arrived when he was named a starter and he heard his name pronounced as a starter. He said, no, it's all about the game, how I play in the game, the end of the game, not about starting the game. What does that say about his maturity at, at his age to say something like that? And have you seen that? And where have you seen that? Yeah, it's him? one of the things we've always loved about Gene is, uh, you know, again, he he's, he comes from a coaching family. His dad, uh, they're very much a basketball family, and uh, they've been around it, so they understand it. And he's probably heard his dad have conversations about the lack of importance of starting versus not starting, and it's about how you play in the game and how you finish and the trust you build with the coaches. So he gets all that, but uh, it speaks to his maturity overall, too. I'm sure it helps coming from a basketball family, but it also speaks to his maturity as well. What does that do for you as a coach to have a guy that young, maybe come in as a freshman, sophomore, and they're already that mature? You don't have to coach them up that way. You can focus on the basketball side of things more. Yeah, we try to identify that in recruiting as much as possible. Um, if we can, that's, that's, I've talked about that a lot, how that the element of maturity is really important to us in recruiting guys. And you, you, you ask those questions. So, um, you know, Gene's a great kid. He's a really, really smart kid. He's an excellent student. Um, and um, it continues to grow as a player, and that's what you want. Is I think sometimes people forget. I know I forget at times. We've got a couple sophomores and a freshman that are in the starting lineup, and you know we've got uh, another. You know we've got a couple freshmen that really play a lot, and so a couple sophomores who are kind of growing. You know in front of us, so you know that's a good thing uh, for us as a, as a program. I know everyone would love to come in as a freshman and make an immediate impact. Malachi style, but how important was Gene's freshman year just to kind of get used to the college game, make the adjustments, play some, have a role, but kind of grow into what he's become this year? Yeah, he, I think, you know, it's, it's always hard on guys, um, but uh, I also think they, they don't have to look too far to see some of their teammates or guys they played AU with playing less than them or lesser roles. I mean, it's all over college basketball. And they're like, oh, well, I'm not the only one that's kind of going through this. So um, I think his first year, he did play. He played important games, helped us win. But um, his game's got to continue to grow. And that's the most important thing I'm challenging him with. He's got to continue to grow his overall game. Uh, ball skills have to continue to get better. Consistent shooting has to continue to get better. He's got to continue to be a complete defender. Um, uh, and grow in that area. And I know if he continues to work, that'll be the case. And I love that about him. Uh, just looking at this Illinois team, uh, looks like they start four seniors at guard. And Coburn is a junior, obviously. Just uh, they present some challenges, it appears, on paper. Just uh, yeah. scouting them. What uh, on and film, too. Kurt Curbelo coming off the bench, too. I mean, yeah. as he's working his way back in, just what, yeah. what do you see with them? It's more um, than just the big guy. Yeah, no, the, the, uh, you, you got a fifth, fifth, a five-year starter in Trent Frazier, five or six, I think, maybe five-year starter. He started since he got there, um, uh, so maybe six years. 
it might be six years, but he started since he got there. Um, he's really as key to them as anything. Plummer's really important as well. I think that was a really impactful transfer for him. I think he came from Utah, Steve. Um, they can really shoot it across the board. They're very old, and and obviously Kofi anchors things. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think they're they're uh, you know there's a reason why. I mean, there's a lot of really good teams in in our league. A lot of really good teams in there. They're right there for sure. You're getting kind of deep into the season here against teams that have to win these games to improve their standing or Michigan, Michigan State probably need them to get into the tournament, et cetera. Just uh, you can't afford to have the kind of lapses that maybe you've had the last couple of games and expect to beat teams that are good teams or desperate teams. Just, I don't know, what, what can you guys do to get that settled and, and work through those and play a full 40 minutes. Yeah, I, I think just continue to work work on it. You're right. The, the people you play now uh, as we finish, um, you know, pretty much everybody's got something to play for, um, uh, I think, as we, we finish out the schedule. Some are playing for seeding. Some are playing for, um, you know, to get off the bubble, whatever the case may be. But, um, you know, I think just continue to work on those things that we've identified we need to work on. Um, I give our guys a lot of credit because they understand, you know, guys, players are, they play college basketball. They understand their ebbs and flows in games. And, you know, it's not like an 11 point lead at a 10 minute mark is safe and secure. And you can kind of go ahead and, you know, start the car. Uh, they realize it's, it's very much about uh, continuing to pl play possession by possession. And uh, I think we've identified some areas we've got to continue to work on and we want to keep the focus on that. One, one, one more on Gene. Um, if you when you once you project like, what do you project his offensive game down the line being? Like, what do you want to see? I guess him become offensively. I just continue to grow his overall game. He's got to become a better passer, more consistent shooter, improve his ball skills, um, overall rounding in his, his overall skill set. And he's done that. He's he's continues to grow in that area. But it'll be important. It'll be important off season for him because. Uh, we expect him to play a big role. Did you get short of possession in the Indiana game? Something with the uh, possession arrow looked like it didn't get reset at one point. I uh, thought we did, um, and I thought we did in the middle of the game. Right. Um, but I've not gotten verification on that. But uh, have you? I have not, but it sure looked like it didn't get reset at one point, and then okay. looked like everybody on the bench was pointing. They knew it was your ball, and the official said the other way. And I wonder yeah. if you had gotten clarity. On that. I get, I went to our bench and said, "I think it's our ball." They forgot to reset the clock, and you know, David Abelhoff's right about ninety-nine percent of the time. So I just deferred to him on that, and he said, "No, they had reset it." But uh, uh, this question might prompt me to 